Hi, I'm Vanelli with PhotoFocus, and while I was in Chicago, I had a chance to sit down with Olympic visionary Jamie McDonald. Now, Jamie's going to share a story on how he's able to use Olympus' new technology to capture some amazing photos that weren't possible a few years ago. Relax, sit back, and enjoy a story from the set. How you doing, buddy? Nice to meet you, Vanelli. Good. Now, you're an Olympus visionary. Yeah. And I know you don't like to get a big head, but that's the cream of the crop, you know, for your industry. And that's great. Yeah. So they, they've obviously saw your photos, they saw what you've been doing, and they decided to make you a brand ambassador for them. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and after looking at one of your shots, the, the, the sunset yeah. shot. Yes, yeah. Great. And we're going to show that in a few minutes, and that's going to be awesome. But before we start with that and talk about your story, how did you get involved with Olympus? You know, like a lot of people now, social media is everything, but I was always an early adopter. So when Twitter first came out, I was one of the first people that kind of grasped onto that. So, and naturally, because I had a camera, I wanted people to see what I was doing, I started sharing my work. And before people were hashtagging brands, you know, and trying to get like, you know, in with companies, I was just kind of doing it naturally. So everything I shot, I would say, hey, shot with my Get Olympus, you know, E3 DSLR and this lens or whatever, you know. and. People started following me, you know, the following kind of grew, and at Olympus actually took notice Picture of that. Now, your very first camera obviously wasn't anything near what you have now. No. What, I mean, you, you were talking about having a child yeah. at the time, so, yeah, so money was tight. Definitely, you know, uh, firstborn child, you know, and we wanted to be able to document that and convinced my wife, you know, hey, let's take a little tax return money and go get one of those fancy cameras that I can take the lenses on and off of, you know. And it just happened to be that Olympus had a killer deal on their E500 DSLR back when DSLRs were like, Big and new coming out, um, so I got a twin lens kit, you know, and it's it's been that's history, man. I mean, I've been shooting ever since. Well, great. Now let's talk about your your story from the set. How did you capture this amazing shot of the sunset? Yeah, so uh, one of the features in the current line of cameras that Olympus does is called live composite, and what that allows you to do is you can start an exposure, and as long as your uh, base exposure is one that won't overexpose, you know, you got like a like a half a second window you can use here. So. As long as your image won't overexpose in a half a second, you can set that as a base, right? So I take a base exposure, and then once I start running the live composite mode, it'll never overexpose. So I was on this beach at sunset where there's a lighthouse and a pier, and I was there just to shoot the sunset, right? And we saw a storm coming in from the south, and I thought, man, you know what? I can do a sunset exposure for half a second, and it freezes that. And then as night starts to roll in and the storm gets closer, I can just let the camera keep running wow. and get the lightning. So what I ended up with is a sunset shot with night skies over here and lightning coming down. I, there's wow. no other way to do that, really. Yeah. I mean, in the old days, you put your hand in front of the lens, you get the exposure, you put your hand there, and then you're praying to God no that you're getting or it. No anything like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, but the te to so the technology is definitely, but it was neat because as an artist, you, vision, you, you saw that vision. Yes. Yeah. Now, in the beginning, obviously, you're just starting out, right. you know, and new people starting out, you're not going to see that vision. No. You may look at it and say, oh, crap, yeah. I better quickly get the shot before that storm comes, uh, right. and then I'm out of here. Yeah. So here, as a seasoned veteran, you decided, you know what, this is pretty cool. I got this shot. I like it. Yep. Hmm, why don't you stick around for an extra 20 minutes right. to see what else happened? So, you know, for a portrait photographer, imagine if, like, you're a wedding photographer, you have the the reaction to the reaction, like you see a little kid running down the aisle, there's a reaction, all of a sudden their parents are chasing yes, them, yes. there's a reaction to the reaction. Yeah, sure. In your case, it was instinctively, right. you say, okay, well great, this is a beautiful sunset, yes. ooh, look at that storm coming in. Right. So that's a great lesson for people to look sure, at. It is, you know, and you know, we're talking about a sunset here, right? You know, quick sunset tip, I'll just throw it out there. You shoot the sunset, it sets, it's behind the horizon, stay another 15 minutes and turn around and look the other direction because usually the sky is incredible over there. So again, it's about, you know, waiting a little bit extra and capturing, you know, those extra things that happen when most people would probably just pack up the bag and go. Exactly. Now, 20 minute exposure, that, that, that's impressive because it's a hit or miss. Either it works or it doesn't work. Right, you know, you at, know. at the very least, I'm gonna end up with probably a really great sunset, which, you know, in itself, it would have been a great sunset, beautiful location, you know. Um, but again, being able to run it and just let it just sit there and run while I had another camera out, you know, just taking more, you know, shorter exposures, I just let this one run for 20 minutes as the storm wow. its way in. Wow, know? that technology is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. Is it, 
Okay, so I'm visioning in my head where you, know, you do a double exposure. You don't, you don't have, in the old days, you don't advance the film, right. you snap the shot, wait for the next one. But the problem with that was if you yeah. didn't get the shot, you just wasted that, that, that frame. An easy way yeah. for people to envision what that feature does in this camera is, um, imagine you're, we're in Chicago, right? If you want to do a city shot of you know, the cityscape at night, you can only run the exposure for so long, and it's going to overexpose, right? But what if you wanted to run an exposure long enough to get star trails swirling over the top of the city? How are you going to do that? So with this camera, what you do is you expose for the buildings, right? You get that base exposure done. And once that's in, it's set, it's burned into the camera, it's saved. Now the camera only will record new instances wow. of light. So I've got actually a Chicago skyline shot done exactly that way from the balcony of apartment. I've got the Willis Tower in the background, all the city lights, all the windows, nothing overexposed. Then I've got all these stars rotating over the city. Star, uh, light trails from cars driving by. I was just about to ask about the light trails. Because again, with light trails, that, that's that old concept that I do. I stick my hand in front of the lens, wait for the car to go right. by. So I know that this is a 10 second exposure. Sure. I'll hold it, wait till the car, one, two, three, yeah. put it back down, yeah. four, five. So you're saying that with the new features of this, it won't overexpose. It figures it all out. Yeah, once, that's you, great. once you've got your initial exposure set, any changes in light are recorded to the camera. And awesome. you know, so we're talking about nighttime, right? Or you know, sunset, it's getting darker. I've done it actually in the daytime by putting an ND filter in front of it, making it dark enough. And then, so in the daytime, everything is light. So what are you gonna see? Well, you've got light reflecting off the clouds. So now you start getting clouds. You can see all this motion and stacking of clouds. It's a pretty neat feature, you know? Awesome, awesome. And again, a lot of this is because you are a visionary right. and because you're, you're a pro, you're seeing things from an artistic standpoint. Sure. And now you're using the technology of the camera itself right. to make that vision come through. Yeah, I think once you get familiar with whatever system you're using, you know, so I know all the, the cool little things that the Olympus cameras do, and I know other brands have other little tricks that they can do as well. And I think people just need to realize what those little tricks are that their cameras can do, and then start thinking, now, how can I apply that trick to the, stu the, the things that I like to shoot? You know? So for me, nature and wildlife, naturally, I'm chasing lightning and stuff like that, and star trails. You know? so, That's great. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for taking hey, time man, out. It was my honor to talk to you.